Yes, with, with children, I would say that the most important thing that you can realize, and this will help you with all of your mind training, is that every relationship that seems to be a relationship of this world is like a mirror or a reflection. So, in one sense, first there should be this feeling of immense gratitude for these mirrors, we'll call them, that are children. Because they're just acting it out. Just like kids like to play act, and they like to act and play mom and dad, and, and, and play store, and, and you know, play act of vocation, and everything like this. They, they are mirroring back everything that you think, and everything that you believe. And in that sense, they're doing a great service. So there should be an underlying sense of gratitude for that. Um, we've talked a little bit, when you and I have talked too, about how it's a tendency in this world when, you, when you've gone through uh, extreme kind of traumas, you know, we could call it, you know, abandonment or all the different things, to want the best for your children, you know, to, to make sure that they never have to be subjected to, to that kind of thing. And it's, it's still kind of as if that there are like these autonomous beings with minds of their own and, and wills of their own and so on and so forth, and you don't want them to be tainted by these worldly experiences. When really underneath we start to see that the world is not outside of our consciousness at all. We just drew forth all the, the interpretations of the, of the script, the interpretations of the circumstances and situations based on our belief system. So if we believe in an abandonment, even if it's of course a very buried unconscious belief, then we will perceive scenes of abandonment. If we believe in rejection, we will perceive scenes that we interpret as rejection. You know, the world is just a, an outward picture of an inward condition, and so while we still have a sense of lack and, and emptiness and disharmony and loneliness and shame and guilt on the inside, then the world just does its job and just outpictures them for us. And in, that, in one sense it's good because, because we really do need to get in touch with what we've pushed out of awareness, and that the world gives us that opportunity. So, I think with children, you can find that whenever there's a, a desire to protect them, which can seem like a very natural parenting desire to protect a child, just like in nature, you know, even muskrats, you know, protect their, their offspring and so forth, that all of nature and everything is still all a, a projection from the ego, so all the protectionism that's involved in those kind of relationships is still part of, of the same ego belief system. But as you start to practice everything in terms of your own mind training, and you start to be clear of this unconscious darkness and guilt, then, you know, the law of attraction kicks in, or the law of witnessing kicks in, and you keep drawing forth these witnesses to your own healing. And in that sense, children can be very much a part of that. That, that the love that you wish for them, you find within yourself, and then extend and radiate that, and then they reflect it back. And it's really, a, that's a joyful use of children and family uh, to, to go through that deep transformation. For most people, they, they don't really see a lot of reflections in their biological family of, of some of these deep insights and truths, though. Usually it's the opposite. They have a lot of doubt thoughts reflected. And so it's, you really have to go on that journey to find it in yourself. And glory hallelujah, when you do, it, it, everything turns around. All of the reflections in your whole world turn around and, and reflect that love back to you. But in terms of, of being very, very practical, it's not like you can set up like the perfect environment, but you can work on lessening the sense of control, lessening the sense of um, superiority, the sense of judgment within your own mind, within your own consciousness, and they will receive the immediate blessings from that. One time I was in South America, and I, I was down in Argentina, and I was 
off in the rural areas, and I, I was working with a group of uh, of women who were Course in Miracles uh, students, and they, they all, the whole group had young children, and they said, "Oh, we are so grateful for what the little small children are teaching us. They are like our teachers." And I said, "Can you summarize the teaching of the small children, you know, for me to share with the whole world?" And they said. It came through in Spanish, but basically the English interpretation of, of the great lesson that the children had for, the, for these mothers was, you're done. Uh, <laughs> it was really short and sweet, you're done. I said, can you explain a little more? And they said, well, this game of superior and inferior is over. And we're here to teach it. We're going to do a good job teaching this. You know, it is done. You know, just because you have a bigger body, or a bigger brain, or have read more books, or whatever, cannot obscure our perfect equality. And that that's the only lesson that there is to, for this world. Is that the only one lesson is perfect equality. So it was, you're done. It was like, resign now uh, from, from this arrogant position uh, that you feel like you are over us in some way. And so I really have enjoyed sharing that as I've traveled around as well, because that is, a, is an extremely important lesson, that lesson of perfect equality. And it's not so much that you can control the environment for people or for, for children, but it's more like the environment of your consciousness. You do pay much more attention to that than you did before. You know, you, you really are watching your emotions, you're watching your your feelings, you're watching your thoughts, you're paying much closer attention, and that's a good thing too. That's just part of the natural attentiveness that's required for this mind training.